today we're revisiting this, my 1994 S-Works Prestige. Um, regular viewers will of course remember what this thing looked like when I first got my hands on it. It was donated to me by a very kind gentleman in the north of Scotland who I think had got it from somebody that had stored it under the ocean for some years. Um, you will of course have since seen me ice this thing out with full XTR, some ring blade bits, titanium bolts throughout and of course a paint job that's the envy of YouTube. And I think it needs one more finishing touch and that's the theme of today's video. Okay, when we get close up, I think I'm going to have to admit it's not just one finishing touch, it's several. The finish on this XTR crank is a disgrace. Thankfully, I've located a shot blasting machine, so uh, stay tuned for that on a future video. The finishing touch I'm talking about today is, of course, the pedals. Now, this thing actually came equipped with first generation X SPDs, and that's the theme of today's video. Um, there are, of course, videos all over YouTube extolling the virtues of Shimano's SPD uh, Shimano Pedaling Dynamic System it stands for, um, as perhaps the greatest pedal, if not the greatest mountain bike technology ever invented. Um, and those videos are not far wrong. It really is an amazing piece of kit. Now, this of course is not one. This is a replacement that I put on because most of my fun bikes have um, platform pedals for the simple reason that I can jump on them in flip-flops or trainers and go out and play in the park with the kids um, without needing to put my um, shoes on. However, my serious bikes do actually have a range of SPDs on, all of which I think are amazing. So starting with this 1993 Dave Quinn, this was the first pair of SPDs that hit the market in uh, the early 90s. This was the DX ones. Um, interestingly, XT, which were obviously more expensive and uh, considered more desirable, had not just a claw this end, but also a sprung section at the front too. So rather than going front in and then snapping down, you could snap down from any angle. The problem with those was they were bigger, heavier, more complicated and more prone to clogging with mud. So actually DX were the ones that the pros used and that uh, everybody really wanted. So this was the pair I had. I still have the scars all over my body. You can see one on my wrist there. I've got one on my knee to match from when I uh, was first getting used to these things and of course disengaged attempting to sprint and slammed the pavement. Um, but in terms of function and I mean these things are amazing. I've never had to even do any maintenance on them. They're getting a bit rattly now but they still run. Moving on the 1999 S works. This was my first pair of uh, sort of combo SPDs. These I think are the 545s if I remember the numbers. Um, same mechanism, same principle, but with a cage on the outside so that you could actually wear these, um, wear normal shoes or flip-flops or whatever riding this, but you could also use your, your proper SPD shoes. This is the bike that's used to tow the trailer that my kids ride in, so it's nice to have um, both options on it. Then moving to some more modern bikes, this is the uh, Pace Adventure bike that you may have seen in other videos with some slightly more modern uh, XT SPDs. Completely same design, same system as, as the earliest ones. These things, as you can see, have taken an absolute battering. Um, these are probably more than 10 years old and are still spinning completely freely and still work flawlessly. Right the way up to this, which is my sort of best mountain bike with this year's XTR SPDs on, which are light and many say the most perfect pedals that you can possibly buy. And I wouldn't say it's far wrong. I would also say that uh, even one of my road bikes has SPDs. This obviously being a touring bike, it benefits from the um, versatility of being able to snap in and out a bit more easily because they're double-sided. Obviously my fast road bikes use look pedals, which are single-sided, but they're much more of a faff to get in and out of. Um, the cleats are harder to walk in and these things are just more durable. So I think putting S um, these kind of XT uh, off-road specific SPDs on a road bike, if it's for this type of use, is entirely appropriate. And these are the actual pair that came with the S-Works. And as you can see, I have never seen a pair in as rough condition as these. They're exactly the same DX ones, um, M525s, that I have on my Quinny. So these were the first ones that uh, came on the market. Certainly, I've never had to do any maintenance on any of my SPDs, but these are absolutely in need. Very, very loose pedal spindle there. And some ape has tried to sort of sandblast or just oven cleaner off the black finish on this and leave it silver and it just looks rough. So I'm going to strip these down and uh, do a complete refurb on them. So a quick close-up walk around of the pedal itself. 
Um, it basically comes in um, two sections. Number one is the spindle assembly with the bearings. Um, this plastic collar here comes loose and then the whole um, bearing assembly comes out and can be re-greased and tightened down with a cone and lock nut just the same as with any other pedal. What you're then left with is the carcass of this SPD which as you can see has got a sprung back plate on either side. They're the same mechanism both sides. Um, in order to take this apart the first thing you have to do is probably see in there, um, there's a coloured dot inside this bit here. Now, obviously it's not coloured anymore, I think it would have been red 30 years ago, but uh, what you do is, using a 3mm I think, Allen key, you loosen off this bolt here to slacken off the spring tension, and then you can take the whole sprung mechanisms out using these bolts here and here. And what that then leaves you with is all the spring assemblies and the, the snap plates and all the rest of it, and then a bare body. And what I'm going to do with these bodies is respray them back to the satin black that they were originally meant to be. And with a newly finished body and a newly greased spindle assembly, these will be good as new. This is the tool that came with them. Um, I've had obviously this one since new and it's very, very useful. In fact, I won't be able to do this without. It's also marked uh, left and right, which way you loosen the body. So, which is also very useful because they're not threaded the way you'd expect them to be. So I've already loosened it earlier using a headset spanner on this. And now I should be able to just remove the spindle body. Mm is going to need a bit more force than I'd hoped. Unbelievable, it's still got completely clean grease inside. Serious quality. So that's just going to get re-greased and tightened down using the, uh, the lock nut method like you would with any pedal and um, I'll attack the surface rust on it and then this is as good as new. Now, this, just slackening off the springs as far as they'll go, so they don't fly out when I take the thing apart. These picks are useful for getting the dried mud out from the uh, screw heads. Okay, first unexpected problem. These two bars that go all the way through and hold the springs in place are completely seized in place. Um, if I go at them any harder with a screwdriver, I'm gonna rip out what's left of the, uh, the heads. So I'm gonna to have to soak this thing overnight in some penetrating oil and hopefully that will loosen the thing up. I'm guessing it's thread locked in place deliberately because they don't want monkeys like me taking them apart and invalidating the warranty. But considering this thing was out of warranty many decades ago, I think it's probably um, safe to go in. Drastic measures on this one. What I've done is wrapped it in cling film, filled the pouch with WD-40 so it can't evaporate, it can't drain away. Uh, it's basically going to be submerged in the stuff overnight. Hopefully that will penetrate the threads and then I'll be able to get the thing out without stripping it. You join me live at the critical point of no return. Um, anyone that's ever rounded out or stripped a bolt head before will know that you only get a finite number of goes at these things. If I keep fouling this up, then this thing will be a write-off. In fact, the whole pedal, the whole project goes in the bin. So, given that I've only got a very limited number of goes at this before I completely destroy the bolt head, I'm going to give this thing the full inquisition. That means the trifecta of penetration, heat and impact. So the penetrating lube did not work. 24 hours soaked in WD-40, immersed in WD-40, and this thing's still not shifting. The next thing, as any uh, internet engineer knows, aluminium expands when heated more or uh, to a greater rate than steel does. 
aluminium body with a steel bolt that should hopefully make a big difference and then of course the third thing which is impact um why you may cry do i not have an impact driver of course i've got an impact driver i just can't be bothered to go and get it out and also um it's more likely that an impact driver will do damage to the bolt head whereas i trust myself with a disposable screwdriver um and a hammer No, not budging. Yes, get out. Who's your daddy? All right, paint fans, fast forward to the fun bit. Um, so these have been degreased, cleaned and dried. Um, as you can see, I've masked off each threaded hole with either a plug of paper or an old bolt. So four old bolts to uh, fill the big holes and then little plugs of paper to fill the little holes. The little plugs of paper will also act as handles so I can spin these on the stands that I've made out of spokes. So these can now be painted. bad for our first coat. 10 minutes between coats, probably do three or four just to make it really nice and then we'll move on to the axles. As I always do in my restorations, um, there's a certain amount of bits that have to go into the vinegar. Uh, these four step plates, they're not side specific, all four of them are exactly the same. They are obviously covered in surface rust so they're going to spend a night in the white wine, oh, if they fit in the bottle. Might need to find another container for them. Uh, also, of course, this spindle, which um, needs the vinegar, and we have to take this one apart. spraying this stuff gently because I don't want to blast these tiny bearings into orbit never to be seen again but I'm uh, very pleased to report that every single one is accounted for in this pot 24 hours of soaking and they'll be ready to reassemble and the final ingredient Now, before we move on to the spindles and bearings, who can resist a good flat lay? Uh, this is what one right hand, in this case, pedal body assembly looks like when exploded. Um, absolutely beautiful. Obviously, I've spared you the hours of toothbrush and brasso to get it into this condition, uh, but it's ready to be reassembled. So I'll do that next, and then we'll move on to the spinny bits. Little Hollywood jump cut to make it look slick. Uh, the reality is I'm very glad I didn't film the reassembly because it was a nightmare. It took ages. Um, if you want a how-to video, this is not the place. In fact, I don't think even Park Tool show you how to actually take apart these carcasses. Um, for that, you need to go online and get the uh, user's manual where there's an exploded diagram. Anyway, took ages. I did not enjoy it. I won't be doing it again. But here they are assembled. You can see the little red dot where you adjust the spring tension is still red after all these years. Who knew? Uh, underneath all the mud and rust, um, these things are in good nick. So, onto the spindles. If you want to actually learn how to do this bit, and it is very straightforward, 
um, I can recommend both Park Tool and also um, RJ the Bike Guy did a really nice video. Um, obviously, he's much more patient and skilled at filming these things than I am. So I really highly recommend those videos if you wanna copy me and, and do this job. Um, the only difference is that the one that RJ the Bike Guy uses is a slightly newer model and it has a different number of bearings and different gauges of lock nuts and things. But to be honest, um, you don't need to be a genius to improvise your way around that. So in this case, there's 12 bearings on the uh, lower race, which is the fatter one, and then 10 on the top. And how you put it together, as I said before, is super self-explanatory because it's exactly how you would do any, um, any pedal. Now for this phase, you need an 11 mil quite flat spanner to get the cone down into place and then to hold it in place when you tighten up the lock nut. Now I don't happen to have a flat 11 mil spanner. So for the second time in a year and, probably, and for the second time in its life, I'm using this multi-tool that I got with my 1988 Ridgeback. So it's finally making itself invaluable. And this, as RJ the bike guy says, is just about trial and error. You really have to just tune it so that you've got the perfect balance between freedom of movement and play. That feels perfect. Nailed it first time. Now another factor of the genius of SPD design is you don't need to pack or pump the actual bearing assembly with grease at all. This thing does it automatically. All you do is fill this cylinder down the middle of the body, about a quarter to a third full of white grease, which I'm about to do. And then when you screw the assembly in, it forces the grease up through the bearings and out of the collar at the top, filling it with grease, sealing it, and making it run beautifully smoothly, um, as you're about to see. Hear the excess grease popping out through the top seal. Very satisfying. You don't need to rip it up tight because remember it is only a plastic collar. Just uh, pinch it till it's snug. Take off the tool and hey presto, there's the excess grease. Give that a wipe and this thing is as new. Tasty. All right, the money shot, which is the before and after, always so satisfying on overhaul videos. Um, but also, I suppose, equally interesting as what these used to look like versus what they look like now is what these um, entry-level SPDs from 1991 look like when placed alongside the top-of-the-range XTR ones from 2021. And what's really interesting is obviously there have been slight tweaks in terms of weight and in terms of mud shedding and cleat engagement and so on. But testament to the genius of the design is the fact that you can use these pedals or the oldest ones with the same shoes. They feel exactly the same and they work every time perfectly with a really nice satisfying click and you feel really safe once you're in them. And that really is the reason why I continue to love SPDs. I'm actually minded not to put these back on the S-Works just yet until those scruffy cranks have been polished back to uh, some sort of decent shape. So of course stay tuned for the video on that because I think that really will be the finishing touch to this bike. Stay tuned as well of course for the free bike giveaway, the retro bike uh, that I will be giving away on this channel this summer as I promised previously. Um, no joke, it is on its way to my laboratory as we speak and it's looking good. So um, I'll be updating subscribers in due course. In the meantime, thanks as always for watching.